think it's you know very early on in trying to understand the origins of this you know uh, SARS coronavirus uh, pandemic. If you look at the um, uh, epidemic with the SARS-CoV-1, it took over a decade to really get a full understanding of, of the origins there. And and with the large Ebola outbreak, you know, six or seven years ago, that's still ongoing. The understanding there, so it, should, it gives you an idea of the timescale it actually takes to fully understand. Um, the, the origins of, of these epidemics and, and so consequently and there's a danger there when, when we've got that still building that understanding of, of, of numerous theories then everything you know so many possible hy hypotheses because the, the data isn't there yet and, and, and consequently that can sort of maybe list, miss you know lead people down thinking uh, different pathways of how this could occur rather than looking at them the most likely um, uh, you know, reason for this, you know, which would be consistent with previous epidemics of, you know, possibly an animal origin. And there's a number of different hypotheses, but I think starting with only one hypothesis that is actually probably statistically a less likely hypothesis compared to more likely theories it is not necessarily, you know, an approach that's likely to yield that, you know, the best information. But everything needs to come together more in terms of, you know, see, you know, seeing the bigger picture and, and working together in that way, following the, you know, the, the normal established methods of science, rigorous scientific study that we've had, you know, going for a long time now and in keeping with that that there's that side of it but you know opinions and theories are, are, are just that often you know their opinions and theories they're not you know necessarily aligned you know with the main body of, of evidence you know it's so critical that um, uh, science can act impartially it's not following a particular agenda because ultimately we're trying to get a better understanding of the outbreak while simultaneously trying to get a better handle on the outbreak. So I think that, you know, the priority at the moment is obviously getting a handle on the pandemic. But as we understand the origins more, that can inform not just our understanding of this outbreak, but of future potential outbreaks and, and you know, how they can be prevented. So it's a very important area of study establishing this origin, um, but it takes time and needs to really, you know, weigh up all, all the evidence. theories start to abound oh well you've got a lab in that you know region of the world uh, that studies that virus because actually that virus you know occurs in that that that, that region and then then theory then then actually it can lead to these theories that aren't based on the evidence but then start to you know um uh, point fingers potentially at the groups trying to you know yield a greater understanding so there needs to be a, uh, a transparency with all the evidence but also a culture that promotes that transparency and, and doesn't um, feel you know lead to any groups feeling that if they if they discover something it might actually come back to you know be point in you know, the finger pointed in their direction because it's a global disease and and it requires a global understanding.